Theater 5 presents Finders Can Be Losers. Attorney Granger's office. Is this Attorney Granger? I'm sorry, Attorney Granger is not here. He's gone for an indefinite time. When will he be back in his office? I said he's gone for an indefinite time. Who is this calling? Well, he'll be back sometime, won't he? Can't you give me an idea? I'll have to know who's calling. My name is Jane Melton. I don't see your name on the list. What list? It doesn't matter. Attorney Granger is left for an indefinite period of time. Possibly he'll never return. What can I do for you, miss? I'm Jane Melton. I talked to you on the phone last week. There have been a lot of phone calls. Uh, did I tell you to come in? No, but I thought I'd come in anyway. Has Mr. Granger returned? Mr. Granger is away for an indefinite... Yes, I know. You told me that on the phone. I'd like an appointment with him, please. Miss Melton, I've told you that Mr. Granger is accepting no appointments. That isn't exactly what you told me. You said that he's away somewhere. Indefinitely. Yes, but now you say he's accepting no appointments. That means he's not away, is it? <laughs> Miss, I'm not going to argue with you. Whether Mr. Granger is away or not, he's not going to see you. Because my name's not on the list? What list? Well, you wouldn't tell me what list, so I don't know. Look, Mr. What, what's your name? That doesn't matter. All right. I'm sure that you're in touch with Mr. Granger all the time, and I want to give him a message. I'll take the message, uh, but I'm not in touch with him all the time. Oh, I think you are. And I want you to tell him that Jane Melton wants to see him. Jane Melton. All right. I'll leave the name, and he'll doubtless see it when he returns from outer Mongolia. Very funny. There's more to the message. You're to tell him that Jane Melton is 20 years old. Tell him that Jane Melton may not be her real name. Tell him that this Jane Melton, or whatever her name may be, Lives in Spring City. I have it all down. Get word to him right away, please. It uh, might help if I might know the nature of your business. Mr. Granger is a lawyer. Don't you assume that perhaps I have some legal case for him? <laughs> What's so funny? You know what kind of a lawyer Mr. Granger is, don't you? In the past month, I've learned what kind of a lawyer he is. I've read everything I could about Mr. Granger. Well, then, do you expect him to be interested in your accident case or boundary suit or whatever it is? I expect him to be interested in Jane Melton. The only people he's interested in seeing are the ones whose names are on the list I told you about. You mean the list you didn't tell me about? Have it your way. Are all the people on that list gangsters? Gangsters? I thought you knew what kind of a lawyer Mr. Granger was. A gangster's lawyer. Miss Melton, this isn't the 20s. Mr. Granger is a corporation lawyer. Or was before he went away for an indefinite stay. By corporation, you mean syndicate, don't you? Well, at any rate, I mean big business. Very big business. His clients for the past 20 years have all been business establishments. Illegal businesses. <laughs> well, this is the kind of thing I have no authority to discuss with casual strangers who walk in here. I still want to see him. All right. Jane Melton. Or maybe that isn't a real name. Twenty years old. Lives in Spring City. Have I got it right? Right. All right, Miss Melton. If he ever gets back from Tierra del Fuego, I'll tell him. Care for a drink, Eddie? Uh, thanks, Mr. Granger. Uh, bourbon, please. Mm. Here you are. Thanks. Uh, telephone ring today? Uh, no, Mr. Granger. Good. Any car shown at the driveway, even to turn around? No, no. Now, I tell you, Mr. Granger, I uh, think you're home free. Yeah, I think so, too. It's been five months now, hasn't it? Oh, nearly six. Yeah, well, maybe we're in the clear now. Well, it looks that way. You know, it's a funny thing, Eddie. Hmm? I never really wanted to be anything but a good lawyer with some legitimate clients. Well, with your education, I can understand that, Mr. Granger. And I succumb to temptation. Well, the uh, boys can tempt you pretty good. Yeah. I didn't have a nickel at a time, you know. Not not what I'd call a nickel, anyway. Uh, you you think they really let us go? 
Uh, six months and not a phone call. I no attempt to contact you, even in the office. No, I, I think they've let us go. I hope so. Anyhow, when Andy gets here, if he hasn't got anything suspicious to report, I'm going to bust loose. Hmm? I'm going to go to town, sit in my office, and wait for business. Legitimate business. I want to lead a normal life, Eddie. Yeah, I know. Me too. Yeah, we can't fool each other, though. They might come for us any time. Yeah, I know. But I don't think they will. I, I think they believed us when we told them we were through and we weren't going to rat on them. Well, I sure hope so. There's Andy's signal. Well, I'll let him in. Uh, you want to give me the gun? Yeah, here, here it is. Thanks. Hi, Eddie. Come on in, Andy. It's okay, Mr. Granger. It's Andy. Hello, Mr. Granger. Nice to see you, Andy. Here's your drink. Thanks. Uh, look, I'll go keep my eye on the driveway. Well, Andy, it's looking safer and safer. Practically nothing happens in that office. Except one thing. You know what's that? It's a girl. She called once last week. I told you about it. It didn't seem to mean anything, but uh, today she followed it up. She came into the office. What does she want? She doesn't say. But she gave me a message for you. Wait a minute. Here it is. I'm to tell you her name is Jane Melton. Melton? Why? Does that name mean something? No, 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 of course not. Now, what else did she say? Well, she said her name was Jane Melton, but maybe it wasn't Jane Melton. She said she's 20 years old and lives in Spring City. Does this girl's message mean anything to you? Not a thing, Andy. Andy. Andy, wake up, but don't say a word. Uh, shh, 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 shh. What is it? The next room. Somebody came in, used a glass cutter. Now, you just stay in the hall and cover the door. I'm going in after him. Okay. Shh. Okay, cover the door. Okay, get him up. Oh, turn around. Yes, sir. It's all right, Andy. I got it covered. Huh? Come on, frisk her, Andy. Holy cow, she's got a gun in her hand. Come on, drop it, lady. All right. That's Jane Melton. Who? Jane Melton. I followed your friend here. Hey, we better take her upstairs to Mr. Granger. I'll get to meet him after all, won't I? What's going on here? Mr. Granger, it's that Jane Melton I told you about. She broke into this house with a gun. Are you Jane Milton? Yes. Come into my study. I want to talk to you. Andy, is that her gun? Yes. Give it to her. Hey, wait a minute. Now give it to her, Andy, and you go back to bed. Eddie, you wait in the hall. Come on, Miss Milton. <laughs> Come in, Miss Melton. Thank you. Andy was telling me about you tonight. He gave you my message? You're pointing that gun at me. I know. Why? Did that man give you my message? Yes. In full? I'm sure he gave it to me in full. He's very efficient. Your name is Jane Melton, but it may be something else. You live in Spring City and you're 20 years old. That's right. And what did that message mean to you, Mr. Granger? Should it have meant something to me? Don't spar with me. I do have this gun. Your message didn't mean a thing to me. Let's put it another way. After you heard the message, were you going to see me or not? Miss Melton, I was intrigued, of course. The message was so cryptic, but I wasn't going to see you. I, I was curious, but I wasn't going to satisfy my curiosity. Why not? Because I've been involved with certain clients over the past 20 years. Gangsters. It's an old-fashioned term, but let it pass. I have been involved with these men, and some of them may, for one reason or another, have wanted... Well, they may have wanted someone to be alone with me in a room like this with a gun in her hand. 
If that's what you're afraid of, why did you give the gun back to me? Because I'm a fatalist. And since you were here, I decided I might as well indulge my curiosity. Now, what did that strange message of yours mean? The name Melton means nothing to you? No. Willie and Gloria Melton? Never heard of them. Willie and Gloria Melton are my parents. Mm -hmm. We live in Spring City. And, and I've always helped in the store we own from the time I was 12. What all this has to do with your coming 200 miles to see me is something I do not understand. Uh, won't you put that gun down? Well... Now, keep it in your lap if you want. If, if I made a dash across the room at you, you could kill me before I took two steps. <laughs> well, all right. I don't like holding that gun anyhow. Uh, incidentally, is that what you came here for? To kill me? I don't know. It would depend on how I answered your questions, is that it? I don't know. I've thought about being alone with you, and sometimes I've thought of killing you. And sometimes I've thought of just throwing my arms around you and hugging you. <sighs> Why? Because... Because I think you're my father. My dear Miss Melton. Don't you come near me. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, what gave... What has given you this idea? I, I thought you said your father was uh, uh, Melton, something Melton. Willie Melton. Mm -hmm. I thought he was my father, too. I thought mother was... I, I thought Gloria Melton was my mother. Well, I think you'd better talk it all out. I think you'd better tell me what happened. Tell me how you felt. It'll do you good. After that, you can shoot me if you want. <laughs> you're, you're not the way I thought you'd be. Now, how did you think I'd be? I don't know. A gangster. Well, my record's against me. But you're nice. And that makes it all the worse. Now, Miss Melton, no, hang it all, I... I'm not going to call a girl who has tears in her eyes Miss Melton. Jane. Jane, you'd better tell me all about it, Jane. Well, as I said, I work in the store. We've got an office in back. I keep the books, among other things. And, and there's a safe in the office. But my father, Willie, mm -hmm. Willie's the only one who knows the combination. But one day I relieved him, and he was in a hurry to keep a dentist's appointment, so he rushed right out, and when I went into the back room, I found the safe open. There was an envelope on the desk, an envelope full of papers, mm. and I didn't know where to put it. So I, so I looked inside, and... And, and you found <laughs> something that told you these weren't your parents. Adoption papers. Mm. And they never told me. I was adopted when I was a little girl, and they never told me. <laughs> Mr. Granger, I sat there, and, and it was it was as if I was some new person, and I didn't like it. And then, after a while, all I could think of was that it explained that... Oh, well, never mind. Explained what? Oh, nothing. A song. Something about a song and a man. But, Mr. Granger, I looked through that envelope. There were other papers there. One of them just had your name and address on it. An old address. Melton. Melton. I didn't feel there could be any reason for your name being in that envelope. Unless you were my father. Or unless, as a lawyer, I arranged the adoption. No, no. All the information about that was in the other papers. Mr. Granger, why was your name in that envelope? I have no idea. I do remember that long ago, when I was young and had virtually no clients, I arranged for the sale of some store or other in Spring City. Now, uh, now maybe, maybe to Mr. and Mrs. Melton. I, 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 I can't remember. But that would explain it. It wouldn't explain your name being in that particular envelope. Now, was it a, a piece of stationery or, or just a scrap of paper? Now, what was it? It was, uh, oh, it was a little piece of paper torn off a pad, I think. Then it slipped in that envelope by accident. 
It dates from about the same time as the adoption. I'll never know, though, will I? Why don't you ask your parents? I've left them. What? I've left them. I just left the house that very night. I had a little money. I found out where you had an office. I got a job. And I've lived for just one thing, to have you explain this. You mean the Meltons don't know where you are? No. I couldn't face them when I found out how they'd lied. Jane! Jane, do, do you love him? Until that day? Why do you love them? Because they were my parents. Because they gave you their love, isn't that right? Yes. All those years of love and you wanted to wipe it out and bring heavy sorrow on them? I had to find my own father. Look, look, Jane. Jane, I'm... I'm going to tell you the truth. You see, I never had a daughter... Or a son. And if I did have, I don't think that however much I might want to have her or him with me that I, a gangster, if that's what you called me, I don't think that I... I don't think that I would be as good a parent as either of the two people who worked for the girl, fed her, clothed her, and loved her all these years. Now, look, Jane. Yes? I am not your father. I never was your father, but whoever your father is, now do you think it's wise to find him? I don't know. Jane, Jane, you want to give me that gun now? Here. Now tell me about Willie and Gloria. They... It's funny. I was going to say they lied to me. That's what I've been telling myself for so long. But they're wonderful, really. <laughs> Ta -da. What are you going to do, Jane? Go home to them. Mm -hmm. All right. You have a car? Yes. Fine. You'll find Eddie waiting there in the hall for you. He'll take you to your car. What's that you're humming? Oh, it's the strangest thing. I, I suppose I must have been three and a half when I was adopted. And I've always had this memory of singing and a tall man singing back to me. And I never knew what we were singing until... Until now? My daddy is tall, he is five feet at least. My daring old daddy is strong as a beast. If daddy could cook, go oh, he'd cook a great feast. My daddy is remarkable. Your father must have made that up. Yes. And, and then there was something he sang. Oh. oh, I've taken up too much of your time. Mr. Granger, I want to apologize. And thank you. Nothing at all, Jane. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Granger. Oh, this daughter of mine, she is pretty. And I try very hard her to please. But whenever I try to accomplish great feats, I fall down on my knees and I... Sneeze. Theater 5 has presented Finders Can Be Losers, written by Robert Senadella and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast... Jackie Grimes, Harry Belliver, Jimsy Summers, and Gar Wood. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. 
Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.